Hello and welcome along to Edge Animate with your host Robert Smith. In this video we're going to make a automatic slideshow so let's get stuck in. I'm going to click on create new like this and Edge Animate opens. I'm going to go to file, save straight away, always a good idea. Now I need to find on the desktop over here my Edge Animate projects. I'm going to call this auto slide like that and save okay now let's um, look at our stage our stage in this case is going to be 1334 by 750 like that and it's always a good idea to turn on responsive scaling because we want this to work and look really good on phones tablets and desktops it'll adjust to the size of the viewing area Okay, so I'm going to Apple minus to zoom out to my stage. That white's far too white, so I'm going to click over here and select black. So I've got a black stage. Okay, let's import some images. So I'm going to go to File, Import. Like this, I've got an images folder in my documents. I'll just grab them like this and I'll open. And here they are, they come in like this. As you can see, we've got six layers now. And over here in something called the Elements um, panel, we've got the uh, reflected layers like on the timeline. But what we've got to do is now, for example, if I want to change the order of these layers, like move that, I can't do it. If, if you're an After Effects person, that's how you do it in After Effects. In Edge Animate, what you would do is go up here into the Elements panel. Let's put Photo E on top, then Photo G, then photo C, etc. in that order. That's the order we want them in. Okay, now we can't see any of that happening because the back is the top slide or the top layer. There it is there. So I'm going to grab that back layer and just drag it down underneath like this. Okay, so now it's the back layer. Okay, now let's get to animating. The first slide I'm going to animate is this photo A, because that's all, that's slide one, which is the um, slide we want to see first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here to my properties panel. I'm going to click here on the X, like that. I'm going to select that by clicking on it and 1334. Actually, we want that to be minus 1334. Let's press return and you'll see what's happened. Slide one has now been pushed off the stage its own width which is 1334 pixels. Okay, now make sure we've got our automatic keyframe and our automatic transition on. So I'm going to go to one second like that. Then I'm going to go back up to my X up here or I could do it down here if I wished. I might do it down here. So I'll select that and type in zero. And now I get an automatic animation. There's the first of my slides. Okay, we really can't see it coming on yet because the other slides are on top of it, but we'll just fix that right now. But before we do that, let's add a little bit of easing to that. Now, the ease I want to use is just here. I want to use ease in. Ease in means that it's going to slow down as it gets to its destination. I'm going to click on quart. That'll do. Double click on quart. And now it's got a transition and some easing applied to it. Let's have a look at that in a browser. So I'm going to go to File. Preview in browser. Uh, not much happening yet. Okay, because slide five is on top of everything. Let's fix that right now. I'm going to copy this by selecting this orange part here and copying it. Command C. I'm going to move my playback head to here to one second. Go to photo B and Apple V, paste it in. Photo C, Apple V again. Photo D, Apple V again and photo E, same thing like that. So let's have a look at that on the timeline. That's what my timeline looks like when I zoom in a little bit on it. Let's just play that. Great, that's exactly what we want. Okay, so we've set up our document, we've imported our files and we've animated them on the timeline. Now that looks good, let's have a look at that in uh, preview in browser like that. You notice we don't have much control over it. They just seem to play and then stop. Now we want this to be an automatic slideshow that just keeps going and going. And to do that, we need to add some triggers on our timeline. Now that sounds a bit scary. It's got something to do with code, 
but it's simply cut and paste. And we'll do that in the next video.